good to see you all finally all of you it's a it's a very interesting topic which we have for the day and rightly so i think all of us coming from that sms era 2006 and 7 used to be even a lot of campaigns on sms and broadly on voice using sms as a channel to broadcasting wide participation running a lot of campaigns i still remember one of my campaigns on lace lace how world cup jao was like on pack message a number and that sms string gets invoked right so from then we the entire industry and the ecosystem got completely evolved and this tons of work which has happened in that system from mms getting transported to sms getting transported to unicode smss mmss and now we are talking rcs with whatsapp taking a leap frog now 420 plus million active users in india and uh, pretty much dominating the social wave out there um we seeing this entire cult of notification whether it's a web browser based or the entire notification scheme of thing which is evolving on the application ecosystem and there's a lot of tech stack which goes into building smart notifications uh, which reads into a lot of data parameters and then lands communication which are more focused and more roi driven in that space another thing what we are seeing is the media banners are now getting more uh, conversational in nature with the entire stack of conversational ai getting overlaid out there so when it comes to all the audience engagement platform i'm a big fan of the work with gen and clever tap is doing in that space and when it comes to conversational ai bots in all its formats which is text voice and video we're doing fabulous work with uh, haptic and ashad out there so really looking forward to a lot of insights coming in from you guys and today i think priya we had a very good chat on all the functionalities which uh, phone pay is building and that's pretty much an exclusive kind of a content on this kind of forum so really looking forward to hear from you and all our marketers uh, on the pla- panel so welcome guys suchit uh, and i had a very good uh, kind of call we have everyone here right let's see you guys okay let's let's just start with uh, our marketers first uh, would just love to know your perspective on uh, mobile marketing strategies uh, and as we know that india is uh, pretty much a mobile first country uh, sure. anyone saying something okay super so uh, let's just start with suchit on uh, the overall uh, mobile marketing strategy which you have adopted uh, on at your end on the client side we'll love to hear from you and then we move next to priya maybe uh, i think uh, i mean uh, this will be true for most businesses uh, barring maybe a few but when it comes to mobile i think the other uh, next level distinction that we started making very strongly is whether it's a website experience versus an app experience because i think everything today is is mobile only so i don't think any digital can happen without or outside mobile because even our website traffic only 2 to 3% of that comes from non mobile devices the rest is is all mobile so i think uh, there's no question that mobile is important or there has to be a strategy i think digital strategy has to revolve around mobile uh, and it starts right at the point of designing the asset so it has to be a mobile first design and actually we've stopped caring whether it it looks good on desktop or not uh, as long as the key functionalities on mobile uh, are are uh, pretty much uh, uh, friction free and and the best uh, user experience so i think that's one big distinction and within that uh, i mean how do we then uh, figure out whether uh, for that particular category in which we operate in Uh, is there enough consumer acceptance of app usage versus web will they want to keep the app installed for the business for a period of time versus um, having more comfort towards just using the website and and making the transaction going away <clears throat> thankfully for us about 70% of the business is coming from app uh, and that is primarily because of two reasons uh, one the cost of acquisition on app is much lower than web and to the retention uh, aspects are I mean, much easier to drive on app and I mean, some of the push marketing works a lot better on app uh, versus web so i think that's where uh, we we've, we've laid laid out a lot of focus and enhance experience both on web and app but obviously we do a lot more things on app so any new product feature that we launch for example whether it is about video commerce whether it is about uh, virtual try-ons etc i mean 
the tech stack is primarily built keeping app in mind and then if it applies to web in a cost effective manner is so i think that's that's broadly what defines our approach and talking about the context for today is also easier to do on app and i'm sure all of us are doing it and and know that so don't talk about that in detail but yeah uh, just just adding to that uh, the last piece is something that we are currently building conversational uh, commerce uh, using some of uh, the platforms like whatsapp etc to drive end to end uh, product exploration as well as uh, purchase i think that's where the current focus is uh, and that sits out of the app or web but we want to integrate that experience also as a branded experience although it sits on a third party platform. as much yeah. as it yeah. goes to an app or web Sure, sure. Uh, just coming to uh, just coming to Priya now. You seem to be offering everything to everybody, right? From payments to insurance to mutual funds, right? So how do you still make it relevant for particular consumer? It's uh, a very interesting use case which I see in phone pay. So would love to hear from Priya. Uh, firstly, thanks for having me, Neeraj. Wonderful being on this session, and uh, right. must confess, Sugar and Bow are some of my favorite B two C brands. So. Super stoked to be with them on this panel. Happy you. customer here. So uh, I think uh, Bao wow, just lost a good employee. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean same with Shubha. Just love the brand, love what they are doing. Uh, so uh, I think uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. We do have. I mean, we're essentially a utilitarian app which begins from uh, payments, uh, the ability to send money. You can pay offline. You can. shop you can uh, uh, switch allows you to book your cab you can buy insurance and you can invest so it it is a it is a buffet of offerings so to say and uh, uh, can get overwhelming if you try and sort of uh, uh, get a customer to try everything on the go i think one of the things which we've consciously done is uh, and we we've, we've realized this over time i mean of course takes uh, data experimentation and uh, customer calling and uh, connect activities to realize that uh, one mostly customers start with the more basic use cases for which they download an app in our case it's of course a note in terms of sending money with upi that's a very very popular use case for us and then they sort of once they start trusting the apps out graduate to the more complex use cases uh, uh, because some of the use cases like buying insurance and investing have a long lead time you you need to some of the customers are trying this for the first time they're buying insurance for the first time because a lot of things they need to understand you know how much is of insurance enough is enough for player how uh, should a term life insurance be uh, a consideration uh, under consideration their age and stage in life so essentially the education needed is is huge as compared to sort of uh, the more plain vanilla use cases which are well understood like sending money recharges bill payments so we try and we sort of divided the journey from uh, simple to more complex uh, we get them on boarded with those simpler use cases in a payment app if your bank account is not linked your you're not trying a uh, uh, send money transactions for for instance or recharging which are uh, popular use cases you are highly unlikely to graduate so uh, to the next one so the onboarding flows are sort of over indexed on the hand holding which is needed there and then of course we take it to more complex use cases so i i mean in my head i divide a customer journey into what i call the onboarding flow then i go to cross selling uh, or educating then i engage with them engagement is something you should be doing across the year and then the most important of course is unblocking if a customer is stuck on an unhappy flow uh, i need to absolutely make sure that i get it to a happy flow because uh, this is finally money uh, you're dealing with So anxiety is fairly high. That's how we sort of think of it. Absolutely. Come moving on to Ritesh. I think Ritesh is uh, pretty much the most seasoned marketer on the panel today, right? From his uh, Tata Docomo days to all the work which he's done on Chroma and now in Adapuna with Softel. Ritesh, what's been your uh, mobile marketing strategy over the years? So many big brands you've been doing. First of all, thanks for calling out my age. <laughs> Actually, Tata Docomo was also pretty uh, late in my career. I actually started working when you know people used to work with faxes and telexes. So yeah, so SMS itself is a big progression, and whatever is happening today is of course you know a lot of new stuff for me. 
uh i, I for me sms uh, whatsapp etc all of these are you know very powerful media in terms of you know building a connection uh, with the customer when he is already on a progression towards doing a transaction okay uh it's hard to imagine a situation where a person will actually uh, you know consume a an sms or a whatsapp message or a push notification as the first step towards the brand and i think you know that is why it is very important to you know conceptualize think through what is the right message for the person at that stage in his journey you know so i always look through the lens of uh, you know timing uh, relevance uh, you know the what is it that's of value in the message because it you know ultimately like we also pointed out it's about you know pushing person towards doing a transaction and if i can personalize it that it is that much greater you know so that's the way you know you want to really frame the communication and that's what uh, you know whether it was in my tata docomo days where one of the most successful campaigns we ran was uh, selling targeted std packs so you know when you have uh, understood a person's behavior is to call uh, bihar from bangalore you know you target him with a with a special pack which allows him to make that call at a lower rate and it has an amazing adoption you know forget you know less than 10% uh, open rate we are talking about you know 50 60% uh, conversion you know so that's really the point, the limited point i wanted to make if the message is relevant if the timing is right and if it is uh, you know solving a problem that is personal to you Uh, the the conversion can be fantastic absolutely now uh, coming on to madhur uh, congratulations on your new role we would love to know on uh, the mobile marketing strategies which you adopted uh, at wowskin and now which will potentially would do for uh, lenskart so we'd love to know your views there madhur sure thank you thank you nikhil and uh, uh, thank you for having me and priya it's great to hear that you're being the fan of brand so Luckily, we are doing pretty much right things. Though, uh, uh, having said, Sugar again, a great, great brand. I mean, we have been following you. We have been, we are looking what you are doing in the in the beauty space. Great stuff. So for us, uh, mobile marketing. Yeah. So Love for us, mobile marketing. Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, this is what being uh, Wow is. Uh, uh, I mean, I would say uh, have taught us also that you know. there's no uh, uh, there's an healthy competition happening outside and we are kind of this day to see uh, uh, companies are basically creating this revolutionary uh, you know reach and engagement for the user to to create something fruitful for the customer at the end so we all are in the same space and respect is mutual for everyone so yeah i think that would be the thing so mobile marketing like i said i want to i'm going to emphasize more on the personalization as is the command of uh we have done it wow and that's something a legacy i'm going to take carry forward wherever i go at least that it help us basically you know i mean as of now uh uh 80% of your time goes on your mobile versus your web in terms of doing shopping or having gaming and all that stuff and hence you have to be very strong and the best part like everyone have mentioned is the funnel wise strategy which is divided between top bottom and mid you have a better funnel wise retention strategy for your consumer acquisition cost is pretty much uh under your control in which you can optimize your campaigns in, in a much more advanced way you have a real time imagery and it's a uh, it's a two way communication for example uh when you when you do your paid ads you have to wait for your response you have to wait for your cdrs and then improve and optimize on that however in mobile marketing you have your uh visual ads and all and you can you know have an have a clarity on how your ad is performing how your campaign is performing and then the defining the strategy like i mentioned is is pretty much more uh, predefined and personalized that you show someone exactly what they are looking at and not wasting their time and which gives you a better roi and better retention rate would be my submission so uh, thanks so much madhur now moving on to the platforms uh, uh, let me just put up this question with uh, ashit from haplic in terms of what are the platform stacks which you are building for uh, marketers out there and how is it how is the game changed how is it becoming more and more engaging and leading to commerce as the key goal which more and more marketers are chasing now ashad over to you sure thank thanks leeraj thanks for having us here this afternoon great to be here as well 
Uh, well, you know, I totally agree with you know what the panelists have said so far. Uh, however, in mobile marketing context, there's one channel I think that cannot be uh, missed out on these days, which is WhatsApp, pretty much, right? Uh, and uh, the reasons are obviously very obvious. Uh, you know, the uh, WhatsApp has some crazy stats. We have 500 million active users uh, of WhatsApp in India today. Uh, 15 million small businesses already use the SMB WhatsApp app, uh, right? And 80% of SMB merchants already indicate that they have, in some Form or shape scale their business on WhatsApp, right? And then with, of course, COVID coming in over the last couple of years, that has brought an entire, entirely different shift into the consumer behavior, and how Indians are now online and you know talking to brands on a daily basis on WhatsApp, right? Uh, and while push notifications, emails, etc., are great, uh, right? The uh, brands, I think, they need to evolve their strategy to reach their customers where they spend the time the most. And today in India, that's on WhatsApp, correct? So also going after the next 200 million customers, which everyone's talk, talking about, that's pretty much like the holy grail. Uh, these users don't generally download apps; they don't have access to emails, perhaps, etc. But they are uh, present already on WhatsApp. So uh, you know, for these reasons, you know, mobile marketing strategy uh, without WhatsApp makes no sense, according to me. And you know, we've been leveraging WhatsApp to grow our business from the start, pretty much. All right, super. Coming on to Jain, I think there is some fabulous piece of uh, tech stack which you guys have worked on, and over the years we've partnered with you on a lot of our brands. So, would love to know your views and what's changed over the years. Thank you, Neeraj, for having me and uh, giving Clever Tap an opportunity to be present on this show. Uh, great fan of all of the brands here. We are seeing on your founders on TV, Sugar. You know, uh, very nice to see them in that show. Okay, so uh, let me uh, go back to the question. You know, uh, see the foundation of our business model is on the evolution uh, that is just spoken about here. Okay, so um, uh, you know, if I have to really look at our uh, business model, it's based on retention, and the way we are seeing it evolve is that uh, a decade ago, acquisition had become the lens through which you know uh, the app businesses try to grow. Okay. But today, if I have to look at, you know, marketers have learned to focus on what's important rather than what comes first. Uh, and probably, I think some of the speakers already called it out that retention is more important than acquisition today. Uh, and therefore, you know, that's what we do in our business model. We help our customers retain their customers. Right, super. Jain, uh, if you could share an interesting D to C strategy which you must have deployed for any of your clients, we would love to hear that. Okay, so again, I would rather than client, you know, we'll talk about a case study a little later. But let me talk about the uh, Dave McClure's, you know, double A, triple R uh, pirate matrix framework that he presented in 2007. Uh, now the D to C marketers are already relooking at it. Okay, so when it was presented, the sequence was acquisition, activation. Revenue, uh, re- uh, referral. Uh, sorry, uh, acquisition, activation, retain, revenue, and then referral. That was the sequence which was presented. Now, over the years, years, you know, the D2C marketers realized that you know uh, only acquisition doesn't solve the problem. In some cases, they saw that 95% of the daily active users dropped after 90 days, and therefore, uh, you know, if you only focus on acquisition, then what we, you know, may end up in is that wheel of you know meaningless growth. Uh, and that's where they they've started relooking at this uh, sequence now in terms of importance and a ra rra model is you know coming in place which is retention activation referral revenue and acquisition uh, and happy to say that you know clever tap probably is the only uh, uh, retention cloud that caters to this you know changing evolution so far i think too much to observe hope the audience is making a note of this <laughs> Uh, let me just go famous to... model in the SaaS world. I don't know if uh, people are still referring to it. Super. Let me just go to Suchit next. Uh, any D two C strategy which you would want to highlight with any success case in your organization? I think. Uh, I mean, there there are uh, quite a few, but uh, I'll I'll talk about something that we did very recently. Uh, and uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> while it was an activity that the conveyor i mean there was a physical touch point overall but i think the communication started on whatsapp as a push notification and hence relevant uh, because a lot of uh, uh, i mean a lot of emotional connect already got built through 
through messaging beyond the consumer could actually experience what we did. Basically. So basically, I mean, we we recently launched a product which is a powder lipstick, and we're the first brand in the country to launch that. Uh, for that, uh, we thought that, uh, and plus it's a special. Did I hear it right? It's powder lipstick. Yeah. So basically, I mean, the okay. bottle is is powder, but when you uh, take the applicator and uh, make bring it in contact with your skin or lips, I mean, you uh, get a matte feel of uh, application. Wow. And uh, hence, you can also use it as a blush and an eye shadow as well. Uh, and the other reason why we were excited about it was uh, the product packaging carries Mukta's face. Mukta is head of product for us, and we were celebrating her contribution to the company. So all lipsticks, not just samples. But all lipsticks that will ever go to the consumer will have Mumtaz's face on the back. Uh, <clears throat> so we were excited about it, and we thought that uh, this is a great. And plus, it was Valentine's Day as a context. Uh, we gifted free lipsticks. I mean, basically gifted it as a Valentine's Day gift to a few thousand of our most loyal customers. Okay. I think uh, there was a personally signed card, etc., that went along with the gift, but. Where WhatsApp uh, notification played a major role in eliciting a lot of responses, uh, while the copy on the card could have been very limited, we sent out a long copy on WhatsApp, uh, talking about why we are doing this, etc. And the kind of emotions we got back made us—I mean, this is also a great learning. Uh, while while we think of retention in certain ways, but I think uh, I would call this uh, retention through recognition. The responses that we gathered. See, when you send out a physical product, there's no response that you can gather, and hence this particular medium of uh, WhatsApp is is so important here because we we got instant responses, and the learning was because the message was personalized to the consumer. We talked about how many orders they've placed with us, how many products they've used in the lifetime, and why we have chosen them as uh, the few thousand, I mean, amongst the few thousand customers, made them. Tell us that they're so happy that we've acknowledged their love for sugar. We've recognized them as a consumer, and we're talking to them directly. I mean, how often do you do that with most loyal customers of yours? And they are saying that just because you recognized us and you acknowledge my love for you, I love you more. Okay, and that is something that could only happen because that there was a two-way communication happening. Because had we just sent this, not many people take that effort of. Writing back, etc. We got to know that in future, if we have to do anything, and this is a great input for our loyalty program that we're trying to revolve. With, I mean, enhance is also saying that how do we build in recognition as a key aspect of the loyalty uh, program versus just saying that on your next shopping you get extra. Because I mean, for us, it's a very different way of thinking. So I think it could only happen because of that particular medium. So. So just to summarize, uh, just to summarize, I've been hearing a lot on personalization, which uh, this medium and the platform renders by default. So question is for Ritesh in terms of some of the cases which he must have developed at Chroma, which is his favorite at Chroma when it comes to personalization. Yeah. So uh, I mean, inspired by the example I gave of uh, Tata Docomo a while back. uh what we tried to create at chroma is a loyalty program uh the challenge was of course you know as a retailer of a very low margin category uh you don't have points to give up because i would rather give a price today than lock away part of that uh, value in points for tomorrow uh what we did exactly like this uh, was illustrating is is we you know created communication that was relevant okay so so chroma has a very engaged base of loyalty customers uh Over 12 million, uh, you know, people who have shopped with Chroma are contactable via SMS and email, uh, and you know the retention and the repeats we enjoy among them are phenomenal. On a given day, almost 60% of the business that happens in a Chroma store is for repeat customers. You know, and and the way we achieved it is purely by you know uh, looking at the lifetime journey of the customer with with Chroma, and therefore. creating a prediction model around when is right for uh, buying which category of product so a phone typically get uh, replaced between 12 to 18 months out and therefore you know you start uh, cooking that communication in the 11th month onward a uh, television today starts getting replaced in 3 to 4 years because you know there is a significant technology change happening so you start making that base uh, when it's around 3 years old uh, and ac gets replaced in 7 years and so on and so forth so 
you know predicting which product you are market for and communicating around that uh, and creating a message which uh, bakes value into the message uh, is how we you know did that and uh, you know it allowed us to create a loyalty program without actually you know creating uh, putting a side point uh, yeah So one of my favorite ad personalization use case was our recent work on Montelis, where we used synthetic video of Shahrukh Khan and gave the power to the retailers, where they ended up creating their own Shahrukh Khan ad and then they ended up viraling it in their network of friends. Right. So that's conversational AI, a classic example of conversational AI coming together with synthetic voice and video and creating that ultimate level of hyper personalization, as we call it. Jayant, you want to add to it? Uh, you have an interesting case on personalization as well. You're on mute, my friend. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So the the example that I wanted to share was one of our customers, Tata Click. Okay. So they, uh, you know, kind of recently uh, did some fantastic work. You know, they actually grew their uh, back uh, 159 percent boost uh, in the revenue uh, via the uh, personalization. And you know the multi-channel engagement uh, that they use. So the context is that you know how luxury goods are defined uh, in a pre-COVID the scenario was by brand name and by price tags, etc. People would define luxury goods, but now that's changing. It's now uh, more on the elements of shopping, like you know, uh, it's about uh, craftsmanship, the uh, authenticity, heritage, etc. Now, what they've been doing is that you know how they're doing it. This the personalization aspect is that they're looking at customers as a cohort and not as one size fits all um, the philosophy extends beyond the extensive product portfolio and it's about holistic shopping experience are they achieving that through personalization or hyper personalization as they call it okay um, they're using our uh, arc engine to understand user actions and the intent behind these actions okay uh, and what they're doing is that you know uh, they're getting uh, these hundreds of or thousands of events that are happening in real time, gathering that data, augment the uh, intent, uh, creating those cohorts, and then launching as high as 300 campaigns per day to see that uh, hyper-personalized experience for their customers. Uh, and through live segmentation, multiple channel engagement, and coordinating messaging across uh, these multiple channels, they're you know, kind of achieving that kind of phenomenal business impact. That's superb. Every time I talk to you, I get a lot of data and insights which propels me to get more of my clients on board in that journey with you. Uh, there's another very interesting area of work which is picking up is this entire ecosystem what uh, Ashad and team are building on conversational commerce right from WhatsApp and now I think I did a last catch up with your team when you're talking about Instagram, creating bots on Instagram and creating commerce on Instagram which is again going to be a virgin audience out there building native experiences. So, so what's the kind of work which is happening on uh, WhatsApp commerce with WhatsApp now supporting WhatsApp Pay and UPI? How is the life changing? Correct. So, I think uh, you know WhatsApp is uh, very heavily evolving, right, to become uh, a, a channel not just preferred by end users by also by merchants. And there are various uh, reasons and benefits, of course, right, to using as I, WhatsApp, as I said. Uh, so, WhatsApp has what two billion people across 180 countries using. WhatsApp today and uh, the best part about WhatsApp is there's very little friction in user adoption right so you have about 400 million odd consumers already spending over 4 hours a day on WhatsApp so very little nudge or push required or habit changing required in that sense right also the time to market for uh, a brand using a WhatsApp channel is minimum or almost non-existent right it already exists on everyone's phone so uh, that's uh, you know there's not there's not much to think about in terms of you know how do I go to market with that strategy and of course it helps in you know a D2C brand and eliminating the middleman and uh, the features that WhatsApp has been rolling out is you know very interactive uh, elements within the messaging which is like buttons and catalogs etc just makes conversations more engaging helps users with their discovery etc you know to get to the products faster uh, and as I said you know interact is you know product by GeoHaptic it's built on top of the official WhatsApp business APIs and it kind of helps small and medium businesses and D2C brands chat with their customers at scale to enable sales, support and promotions and engagement of course on WhatsApp, right? And uh, you know, uh, with the with the new progressing stuff that's happening with WhatsApp all the time, we've built a, our solution 
which would allow you know users to convert their product inquiries on WhatsApp into paying customers by sharing their product catalogs and taking orders on WhatsApp. It also you know helps them to retain the customers by uh, you know giving them recovery uh, recovery of and in cart notifications etc. Sending order order details and timely updates to consumers uh, and of course helping them to you know engage with cons- uh, consumers with a multi agent support setup something that was not possible previously on whatsapp right because it was limited to one device etc but with apis this is now uh, kind of possible and for any small business which is looking to kind of reshape their business i think or grow, grow their online sales uh, or improve overall customer support also whatsapp can be a game changer i think that's an obvious absolutely that's a that's a crazy spiel on whatsapp i think everyone's going to go for it after this session uh coming to madhur you've been really evangelizing this entire space of conversational commerce and more so live commerce what are your thoughts on the platform how are you going to leverage it for the brand you just moved into the conversational whatsapp i think everyone has talked about so i think live commerce is something which is untouched no, and it's a i would say it's a future for for the next round of having a good lead generation and uh, you know good kind of a uh, a uh, better customer experience i would say in beauty space there's a lot uh happen on creating that urgency and solving the query at that point of time and there's the live commerce comes from the picture where you see what you're buying uh, you see the, uh, the the process of using it you see the uh, you understand uh, the pros and the benefits of the product and uh, you know discard all your doubts at same point of time which if It basically ends up uh, giving you the, the real-time solution of your problem, and that's what I think uh, me and live commerce is being really engaged. What people are that you tell about the product, listen to the consumer at real time, and query at that point of time, and make them understand why it's important and needful for you. And I think many of the channels are coming up with Trello is one of the platform which have come out, and your share chat and more gen. uh mx tag attack everyone is moving to that direction uh where they have they have seen a good traction from a consumer influencers are heading towards that you know and being uh, a promoters and ambassadors for the brand now so it's it's a new age where you don't need a a, a known face your customer can be your celebrities what i feel through live commerce and this could be a really good strategy super coming to priya i've been a big fan of your campaign her phone pay phone pay Her phone pay, phone pay initiative, and I think something which is really driving and uh, something which I'm a big believer of is this format called Voice. Right, Voice in India is clearly a one billion story. So even if you have a baseline feature phone, you can still connect with the audiences on Voice. And there's where some of the Voice functionalities or features which you are building up uh, at phone pay and engaging with retailers come into picture. That'll be an interesting conversation point for today's session. That how Voice is shaping up. the entire conversation funnel with the audience sets out there so her phone pay phone pay we should love to hear yeah so uh, uh, yeah i mean i love the jingle too it stays with you uh, so i think a uh, uh, couple of things one of course uh, uh, it's uh, the voice uh, notifications which we've enabled are for uh, what we call the phone pay for business app so essentially phone pay has two apps one is for consumers and one is for businesses and uh, the idea was uh, during the pandemic i think a lot of merchants did not want to interact with multiple devices so essentially what happens is the minute a transaction is done uh, uh, the merchant essentially gets a voice notification uh, indicating that the transaction is over so i think couple of interesting insights we got while we were building this out was one of course uh, it had to be multilingual uh, because the app is multilingual and everything a merchant is doing on the app is multilingual Uh, so all communication crm everything goes in a uh, language which a merchant understands uh, so uh, they are of course merchants are free to uh, choose the language they want and uh, go ahead and set their app like that so when we introduced uh, voice confirmations for payments the idea was pretty much that uh, keep it vernacular keep it in a language they understand uh so essentially uh, it, it's it's been a game changer especially when shops are very crowded uh so they don't need to sort of look for a confirmation from either the bank or the customer's phone and they know on the go hey this is done and then they, they can quickly serve the next customer 
so i i mean i'd also like to add another thing you know uh, neeraj actually the pandemic in some ways has been a huge inflection inflection point for digital payments uh, so one of the things uh, we've also uh, faced as marketers as you know a lot of users we got over the last two years were absolutely new to anything digital so it was older people uh, people in tier four and beyond i mean uh, really really new to any kind of digital experience so i think in 2020 actually uh, i realized we completely changed the playbook of how we communicate customers on board how do we do crm with them etc i mean i saw the struggle in my own house my parents went despite working here i couldn't convince them to go digital till 2 years back so when they were sort of trying to get on the app i realized that uh, people who are not as comfortable and familiar with anything digital struggle a lot more which is where the vernacular the videos the help bots the help center uh, cues at the right time possibly small gifs just have to come in the whole experience has to be just simplified so much So sorry, I thought <laughs> that's no, that's, that, that, that's, that's perfect. perfect. In fact, I'm a big fan of uh, Ashad the app which you guys have built on uh, GeoMart uh, Android app, which has got this voice search plugin. If you launch the app and say "subse sasta ata," they can it list down the ata, and then you can check out seamlessly using voice search as well as commerce, right? So that and then similar stuff you've seen on Tata Click as well, and bunch of other platforms where voice is seamlessly driving that journey. So voice vernacular is kind of. It's definitely for the next 200 million audience. Neera, I can now uh, take the liberty of you know coming in between because you you had a very good comment saying you know this was complex stuff when I first spoke about that change in sequence. Now uh, this is a classic example because uh, what Priya and uh, Arshad did is activation, showing value of the app right on activation. Yeah. And the moment that happens, uh, you know that word of mouth and referral starts. and that gets you new customers so that's the change that i was in the kind of talking about that also uh, jen uh, the framework you spoke about i i mean i thought in my head with me perfect sense because the over index on acquisition and retention is such a hard problem i, I mean yeah yeah it, it just made perfect sense i am going to look it up for sure <laughs> thank you super let's just let's just talk about this entire space of omni channel and when whatsapp activated this entire uh, telephony connect so over a missed call you get an extended communication going over whatsapp that itself was a big high a lot of brands tried and piloted it on on pack and built in that seamless journey the missed call is something it was a usual audience behavior people used to pick up the pack give a missed call and the journey used to start on voice there that is now being replicated with a seamless journey which it gets extended onto Uh, WhatsApp. That's one example of how omnichannel services are running, and obviously layered in top of big data is making those conversations with the audience is all the more relevant. So, question now is for, in fact, for all of you, your favorite omnichannel deployment in the market. You must have done it for your own brand, or you must have seen some deployment done by any X Y Z platform pair or brands in the market. Let's just start with uh, Ashok. Yeah, I think uh, the. The top one that comes to my mind is the Geo Mart implementation on WhatsApp, right? Enabling the entire commerce journey, including voice search, etc. I think that's been a revolution of sorts. Uh, the ability for you know users and WhatsApp being such a personal channel, being able to and what you know exactly resonating with what everyone else in the panel said, uh, personalizing and you know showing them an offering uh, or a catalog of products they've already ordered in the past. etc because you have their context because you have their history etc that just uh, makes a world of difference you see in great conversions happening as a result of that and then you know layering it with uh, ai and ml and you know bringing the whole conversation into an auto mode sort of thing uh, just brings out a lot more value for the end user i think super suchit you want to go next on one of your favorite piece of work on omni channel I think uh, I mean uh, what uh, Ashad was saying is is something that is uh, extremely comprehensive. So I don't think I have an example that can kind of explain this. I mean, it pulls in historical context, builds new context, and has the whole shopping experience built in. I think uh, that's that's the holy grail if if a lot of brands can achieve that. Honestly, super. Uh, Mother, you want to go next? Any so, uh, see, uh, yeah. So I think uh, I was reading about this, and that's I, that's why it's there on my top of my mind. That what Lenskart have done it during lockdown, 
is uh, is uh, since they have a issue of uh, having stores not operational and people have a doubt to to kind of you know uh, have their power sorted to for their lenses they align that you know you can have a visit from someone with all the precautions and he will come or he will come with the with a set of uh, top selling frames and uh, with a laptop obviously to show you and sit, you can select from as larger range we have in the system and then it will be delivered to you to your doorstep so so things don't get step and you know basically eye glasses is something which is a very important stuff and you you and you can't survive without it if you have an uh working schedule so i think that was a really good part and strategy which i felt you can have through it or you can just do a missed call and they will come uh, visit to your house or you can raise a request on the website so it was pretty decent that you know at your home you have a, a tons of tons of frames to select from and uh, do your eye testing at your doorstep it's very physical for them in fact uh, they use lot of these ar stack as well right to virtually try on the shades how it looks on you these exactly. your content right exactly exactly so. yeah i think they were one of the initial one to start with with the thing so there are two ways right now on stores also it's been implemented but on phones and apps and website either you can upload a picture of yours and can have your 3d record and then you can see the and you can visual, visually experience the glass how it's going to look look on you or maybe uh, you know have a a live 3d testing can be done so now move into the metaverse and experience it we are working on that i'm not disclosing it but yes we level. are yes we are into we are we Tell are on the next level with madhur joining in or right, let me just speak <laughs> to jayan love to hear your views it's going to be i would say practically almost every make it super has, technical no not technical but i'm saying you know there are uh, about 750 big customers including some of on the panel right now right you are a big customer some 17 you know kind of uh, properties you know uh, so you know all of these customers you know, the way they use it is uh, uh, you know they uh, they fetch uh, real customer data you know from the customer master records to make it technical real time while so if i know right now that a million users are right now in the app uh, you know our customers fetch that data real time as i said the augment uh, that data Uh, they figure out why are the uh, users there at that point of time. So if I am a media company, I'll find out who's watching what programs at what point of time in your which geography. Uh, create those cohorts, okay, and then based on not just the geographic and the demographic segmentation, but based on the internet, you know, built cohorts and what uh, what actions are getting taken real time. What could be the intention behind those actions? And last but not the least. serve real time recommendations and hey you know what could be the campaign that you want to reach a uh, roll out now through push notifications and which needs a, which user needs to be reached out through what channel so neeraj for example would respond more on sms whereas you know uh, arshad could be on whatsapp you know uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay i said uh, no for sms <laughs> i know <laughs> i just conversion Okay, uh, so that's the entire end-to-end, uh, uh, you know, capability of running that in an automated fashion, real time, in moment, live. Uh, that's when you see the highest conversation. Conversation, and that's why you know, I think if I look at the lifetime value that our customers are getting year on year, that's increasing, and that's increasing because of this ability to. So almost everybody is you know kind of using it now. It's not a new thing now. Super. Coming on to Ritesh, this entire. Uh, uh, what do you call model of disintermediation and uh, working directly with the manufacturers that's a software wave which you are driving any any interesting strategy the b2c strategy over there where omni channel would obviously play a important role so any thoughts on how are you going uh, the the uh-huh. entire model is based on uh, you know uh, geospatial uh, you know what you used to call ring fencing and time back uh, yeah. in the days of uh, pure telecom so retailers who sign up get assigned to account managers okay who are responsible for territory uh, and and they and then uh, you know to get a couple of points which have already been talked about one is the challenge of language if if my customers are retailers i definitely need to be you know able to help them navigate local languages secondly uh, there is a digital barrier as well so while there may be 5% or 10% of retailers would be tech savvy enough 
to you know confidently navigate my app and you know choose the brand choose the deal and do everything on their own the market may become you know 20 30 50% of retailers the moment i'm able to help him uh, you know understand the uh, the tech better handhold him through adoption so the entire piece in the sense is on the channel in the sense that uh, there is a retailer in the location whose location i know because i've you tagged them uh, there is a account manager who gets assigned based on that location and then he serves a you know uh, key account manager kind of structure where he helps the retailer navigate my app as well as identify the category brand etc which are of uh, good value to him and help him you know on board in that sense in settling into the business so that's how we are really approaching it do you use whatsapp in any form ritesh in the current model for software uh currently it's not there we are just migrating from a poc which was portal based to an app Hey, Ashad, so Ashad is your man. WhatsApp here. and uh, you know voice integration comes next. So But definitely perfect. local language has to be the way to go in this part. Now the now the thing, Ritesh, you've been a big proponent of uh, privacy in this space, right? And you hate this space of uh, marketers uh, spamming the audiences with a uh, lot of communication over SMS, which has made SMS like as an abusive medium out there. So would love to hear your point of view. Yeah. I've heard it in a lot of panels, yeah. but I thought this is a good panel to bring it back. So it's one of my pet peeves. Actually, I think it's a fantastic medium. Okay, uh, and and you know, back in my Tata days, I think we were Tata Tele was one of the biggest vendors of B2B businesses. Okay, but the irresponsible use of that medium, you know, it's a push medium. Okay, it's like television. You can put any damn thing on and you have to watch it. Uh, but if the marketer is irresponsible and keeps spamming you, uh, you know, if you see today what has happened. anybody even if a friend sends me and i don't get to see it because i don't look at sms anymore so everything in the sms inbox is spam uh therefore that is part of the reason why whatsapp is so big okay but if if uh, even on whatsapp today you know you started receiving you know uh, messages you never signed up for okay there are eight examples of brands doing fantastic stuff on whatsapp uh My personal uh, favorite is a brand called Huff. I don't know if you like the familiar with it. They do dog stuff. Okay, uh, so it's always personalized, uh, and it is extremely polite and extremely relevant. I love their kind of messages. But at the same time, you know, there are people trying to sell me property, which is in Bombay when I'm in Delhi. Okay, uh, so all kinds of silly stuff going on, you know, and and uh, going back to what I said in the beginning, you know, the message, uh, what we need to own. Uh, the medium is out there for everybody. As long as we focus on getting the timing right, uh, yeah, not in the not in the, not at midnight, for instance. Uh, I frame the message which is relevant to the audience. Uh, I put, you know, bake in some value for the guy which is not available in the general market, and if possible, you know, I personalize it. You know, that's really what is key to getting value out of the medium. Well, I think WhatsApp. You mentioned about uh, the spamming issues on WhatsApp. Uh, Ashad, I would like you to comment on that because I believe any spam activity which happens on WhatsApp algorithm blocks it, blocks the number, right, for about a couple of days. So, how do you how do you address it as a company? Correct, correct. So, I think WhatsApp is you know taking the learnings from SMS, etc. I think WhatsApp is is trying to evolve into this, uh, you know, into a platform where they can manage spam it and you know. curtail these activities a uh, couple of things right that whatsapp is able to do as done right uh, one is the verification process is pretty stringent right uh, also if you are listed as a spam a company that spams etc uh, you're not going to get an alternate number unlike sms where you could get another number if you and start off from another number right uh, also the whatsapp is a pure opt in channel of course uh, you need to have users consent to be able to send it people might misuse it but the good part is that they already have an option to opt out either explicitly or implicitly on the platform itself right you get a message from unsolicited person on whatsapp there's an option right there to block and flag the number uh, at the back end what happens when it's a whatsapp business api number is that the number automatically starts getting downgraded as people report you as spam so your messaging limits which for example you know they have this concept of messaging limits right so you start off with a thousand messaging limits per day on the whatsapp business apis 
right you send a good thousand quality messages to your users where a lot of people haven't kind of reported you as spam etc you get upgraded and rewarded to a, the next year which is like 10000 and conversely if you send out like a spammy message to the next 10000 guys a lot of people have reported you as spam you automatically get downgraded right so it's a, a fine line that you need to balance i think the measures are in place uh, there are of course a lot of unofficial whatsapp uh, providers perhaps that use you know numbers rotation etc uh, strictly no no as per policy but i think uh, all the steps and all the uh, are in place to kind of curtail these activities so how are you building up for this entire conversational uh, partner programs do you have any learnings there sure so you know uh, I, when you say conversational partner programs i'm i'm assuming you're talking about the uh, whatsapp business partner program right yeah, yeah so yeah as a partner we get access to the apis right and then we uh, build out these features on top of the apis to kind of add value driven features for the end users right uh, so uh, including features like the ability as i said for multiple support agents to chat with their customers which is not possible before allowing companies to send out uh, you know messages in bulk right but not necessarily spam Uh, on the WhatsApp channel, right, with a single click of a button, that's another use case. Uh, sending relevant, timely notifications by integrating platforms like uh, Shopify, for example, right. Uh, a large part of our customers today are small brands who are already on Shopify and they use WhatsApp as an additional channel for communication and to keep in touch with their audience and for support, of course. Uh, so I think that's how you know the ecosystem is going to be uh, evolve over the space, and that's how we as partners are kind of building out these. Uh, piece of uh, framework piece by piece exactly all right just coming back to priya what's been your uh, new user acquisition strategy at phonepay and how are you guys building up on various cohorts and ensuring that the audiences are being retained something which even jain broadly touched upon so uh, yeah i mean I, i'd say the last two years uh, uh, in general one with the uh, data penetration being what it is and pandemic sort of necessitating us and making us uh, we are we are now a necess- essential app so to say so we've actually uh, seen users sort of gravitate of course we do run a large multi channel campaigns across tv newspapers the whole hog uh, i i'd say uh, and other uh, utilize other marketing forums or sort of, uh, channels to sort of get users acquire new users that's that's always uh, been an ongoing process i think what for me has been the interesting part of course which i just briefly touched upon earlier was the mix of users uh the first few years when we were sort of getting new users right it was the digitally savvy uh, possibly metro centric or possibly tier 1 and 2 centric users who were very very comfortable with with anything digital so getting them on uh, and sort of getting them started on their journeys was much much easier so i think with the new set of users we are seeing right the problems are different and uh, they're more interesting that way because in some ways it also got us to go down to the interest uh, to the drawing board because when we realized that users were falling off at very basic steps which we sort of took for granted uh, and customer calling so we actually did the good old customer calling and figured out that what was making it drop off drop off and it made us realize that these users are just not as digitally savvy not as comfortable and for them possibly things have to be more more visual and help help has to be more uh, uh, readily available accessible multilingual etc so i think that has been a unlearning for us and relearning in some ways Uh, so that's the last two years that way have been extremely interesting because getting users was the easy part but making sure we retain them and get them to stay on was was a challenge we had to sort of you know uh, uh, figure out again as marketers super suchi if you want to add to it on new user acquisition strategy at sugar i think uh, guys uh, uh, what priya said makes a lot of sense and something that we also correlate to and are doing Uh, just to add on and build on what she said, what we're trying to do is uh, uh, do multiple combinations of what channel and what AOV trigger you need to bring the new user in. Okay, because on different channels, the kind of audience that's present is very different, and we want to have a much more broad-based media mix than just Google, Facebook as being the primary new user drivers because uh, of, of obvious reasons. 
but what happens is uh, what Priya was also alluding to is the quality of audience on each of these channels might not be similar. Okay, one and and the uh, I mean the purchasing power also might be different. So through experiments, through learning, and through some data analysis, we figured out uh, the right uh, trigger point saying that a new user for this particular platform will convert at at the 700. This will convert better at 900, etc. We create those cohorts, we create promotions according to those cohorts and then we monitor retention percentages. So saying, let's say if there are five such different cohorts, how are the uh, repeats happening differently for them? And if repeat percentages of, of a low AOV and hence a lesser quality audience is similar in percentage at least, then we continue to spend. But if the retention percentages are nowhere comparable, obviously they will not be as great as the best channel. But there has to be some uh, proximity and if that's not there then we drop that particular channel although it might give us new users at a very very low uh, CAC etc. But we know that the value of that user is, is not that high so we use it only uh, when we know that yeah, I'm, I'm not looking at repeats from this particular new user and if other cohorts are driving enough repeats my PNL will look uh, overall uh, okay and then only I select those. So I think that's that's been a big big breakthrough. We know what to leverage and what not to use in a particular month, depending on what's my PNL priority for that month or quarter rather, because monthly PNL is a misnomer. Uh, mother is smiling. I can see that. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that that's that's the big learning for us. Yeah, that that brings me back to Madhur, who's the biggest fan of your brand and the journey. The digital transformation journey. Mother, what's your view on what you should say then? See, I think almost I've, everything, yeah, what they have covered, uh, Priya and, sorry, is it fine now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm so, saying yeah. you're echoing whatever they said. Yeah, so obviously because they have uh, mostly common and these are the basic funnel. I think what I will be able to add is that uh, the business we are into, which is beauty, uh, we should be focusing more on benefits and acquiring consumers, that kind of churn out the unrelevant, irrelevant audience from the first place because we are not giving you any sort of opportunity and showing you some features which can be relevant. We are showing you the benefits on the problem. So it's basically also cover up the highly targeted marketing on every funnel, every either we run on the awareness basis or retention basis. It's very highly targeted. We do not want to waste a single penny of the company in terms of showing you something which you have never kind of either searched or thought of. So that's one element and uh, yes we do create our study we have got learning by the uh, with the time spent on on our consumer funnel journey and we understand that what could be the usage of a, of a hair care product versus a skincare product and then we eventually uh, market them in a, in that way itself um, those funnels are being created and getting into that automation slowly and gradually helping us to reduce our marketing cost to retain them and giving us high results and whenever and like we also have seen that you know uh, different channels so I would also add that uh, we do partner with a lot of relevant brands who are in the same space and we do our maths in a, in a very strong or sharp way that what could be a consumer of, of wow or any brand I'm gonna follow so I'm, I'm now I'm talking personally that if I'm doing something for someone I would be happy to partner with someone who is in the same space and the target audience matches. That's helped me to acquire users from that base because I feel the interest is going to be same. And one more channel which we really uh, talk about and be very value is affiliate channels. So when you kind of go to them and you know give them a, you are, you're as good as your brief. So if you if you give them your brief in a very segmented way. You get a good churn of acquisition and then retention is something is your brand persona which you have developed so retaining them is something is to keep giving them innovations keep inspiring them and build that personality of brand is what i feel you're saying affiliates are someone you lean back on you can give them tough kpis and they can come back strong there's no word called tough from the day one i'm very much pretty particular about my numbers i'm not giving or burning money for the sake of creating multiple IDs and sending me the similar traffic. So we are very sharp and thanks to all the tech people who have given us tools to kind of map this and evaluate that whether the traffic is genuine or being repetitive. So those clarity have given us the strength to go back. Since they have a good 
forward because they have a funnel to bring the consumer for every single category hence the con- the, the the traffic is pretty much uh, 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 with a good intent i would say they came there to to buy something and yeah. they are being getting a good offers which basically create the intent more into having an aspiration to buy the product we all all we have to do is to show the right message at right time right jan coming back to you what is the kind of tech stack which is building up now and for the future when it comes to new user acquisition and retention at clever tap what is that we can expect in times to come and what's there now uh i don't know if i can reveal the entire product road map uh, but uh, what i can say is that you know uh, referral has always been on our product road map so uh, 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 i won't be in a position to announce the date but that's something that we're definitely thinking that you know that completes that entire chain uh, yeah. because that's the new way of you know acquiring the uh, users uh, so that's i think one second um, what you would see probably uh, in near future is uh, in app calling and messages to uh, take care of your privacy issues that you just mentioned so that's something that can you know kind of uh, come in soon those are the two things that i can call out all right super i think we are the last 5 minutes of our uh, panel segment i would just take a uh, final thought from all of you gentlemen on the call like we are all moving towards this id free world as they call it and more and more and more brands are now gunning to create a uh, one pdo first party database to lean back majorly on on pack the promotions qr codes or offline channel building a lot of first party data based to counter that so there's no clarity in terms of how it's all going to shape up cookie sunset is pretty much around the corner device id ids they will all follow eventually right so how is this uh, entire audience engagement piece will shape up in times to come so let's just start with it i know that we won't have a clear answer there but uh, let's leave the audience with some thoughts maybe we can jam again that in a subsequent session then have a detailed deep down into conversations of what happens in the id free world but then ecosystem has worked for 10 odd years to build this entire stack together it's all being disrupted now and the new state of art is going to emerge so would love to hear the marketers point of view even platforms point of view and how you guys are preparing for it any initial thoughts would be great such so, a in coming i am going to sound extremely cliche and uh, this is something that we that's fine i think but i think uh, the only way to uh, figure out and and figure out a way out of this is uh, uh, being stronger on first party data and, and keep enriching that uh, i think that's for us that's the only way which is to understand how technology will change how publishers will will uh, change and how ad platforms uh, will have to change as a result of that is something that very difficult to predict because you hear a few things you don't understand I mean, honestly we don't even understand half of those uh, changes and the repercussions of that so uh, for us we use whatever we can use externally but also figure out a way of uh, strengthening our first party data game uh, data partnership game and uh, profile enrichment of our existing customers i think that's that's one of the solutions i don't know if i Any more to talk about it. All right, uh, super. Let's just go next to Madhur, your friend. So the parity is maintained. I just request you to repeat the question for me. I, I, you were just breaking up, and I didn't uh, lost the flow. No, I just said that the world is preparing for an idealist world. So it's if the game of the, the entire dynamics of re-engagement and re-marketing would change over a period of time. So any initial thoughts? I know that you guys won't have a clear answer to it. but any initial thoughts uh, maybe we would leave our audience with that thought and come back next on india television's next episode where we talk more about this he i would say uh, like you mentioned from the initial thoughts that to keep your own data which you have kind of churned out uh, much more secure and uh, trust only that uh, understand the consumer journey and uh, flow of uh, of your own range of your own category keep learning about the category you have been into and uh, focus on that that would be uh, i think the first round of thought initially yeah. all right uh, let's just go to a platform player for a strikingly different perspective let's just uh, talk to ashad yeah i think i'll uh, 
you know it's it's very obvious that brands will be omni channel and need to be omni present uh, at all touch points that their customers exist and i think the uh, only thing that one can actually do at this point of time is as everyone has just you know kind of mentioned it clearly that you need to own your own data and one more thing from my side would be you know explicit user consent uh, is something that we'll start need, needing to take from the end users if we want to kind of actively and proactively reach out to them All right, uh, Priya, you want to go next? I think yeah, uh, sure. It's 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 right now evolving, and uh, uh, I understand. I mean, for us, it means even more because uh, since we're a payment app, uh, for data is is paramount mom, for us. I think one thing I want to make a pitch for is for as marketers, for us, what it means is will also mean is that we need to think and move beyond the spray and pray approach we still have. I think uh, respecting user preferences is actually a win win. I've had so many conversations over the ten odd years I've been doing this with businesses on why relevance matters. So I think now, at least uh, as folks who do demand generation and marketing, this this is something which will become a conversation piece. And you know, funnel vanity funnel metric metrics like millions of X Y Z sent etc. Should and will stop mattering. So I am. I mean, I am. I, I think it it will be in the a step in the right direction when it happens. Your father change and change is good, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, Bring I am saying that. Yes. Super. Let's hear from Ritesh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I would echo a lot of what we have said. I think you know the reason why all these uh, you know party restrictions etc. are being brought in is because of misuse of. Uh, Uh, the opportunities that were given to marketers in a lot of ways. Uh, I have been market doing marketing since before you know this entire world opened up, and we are now going back to a world where you know you have to go back to basics. Ultimately, what we are trying to do, customer, is uh, you know as a brand which has a relationship or wants a relationship, earn the first right and the last right of refusal for its business. Okay, so we'll have to conceive of a channel of communication, and WhatsApp is a great beginning. Uh, conceive of new communication which allows the customer to put up his hand and say, "I'm not becoming a shopper now." Uh, allows the brand to put out his communication, uh, and and give the customer a chance. You know what? Your offer is not good enough, or your offer is great. You know that's really the framework through which to approach. And the start point, of course, is you know allowing the customer to put up his hand and say, "I'm interested in you." So how do we open up the funnel in terms of? Customer, the prospects uh, giving us the data, giving us their uh, consent for us to have that channel of communication. Again, for that relevance is great. Relevance is very important. Uh, not misusing the trust shown in us, and therefore policies and communication are very important. So you open up the channel, and then you, you know, uh, allow the advantage of WhatsApp kind of channels, which are a two-way communication, WhatsApp or in-app. Two way channels of communication for the consumer to have the con- communication at his pace. All right, Jayant, uh, if you could round it up for us. Yeah, I think uh, I thought of a lot of points, but I am going to stick to one sentence, summarizing whatever people said. I think it I is. I have about sixty seconds there. Please go. Oh, sure. It. I'll make it in less time than that. Uh, I think the message is loud and clear. Stop selling, start serving. Because if you serve your customers right, they'll refer and you'll get a new customers. Oh, that's perfect. So with that, we round up our panel for today. Thanks uh, all our panelists. Thanks India Television Brand Press team to have organized such a fabulous panel conversation. Guys, stay tuned to this event for the next four days. I think this is till twenty fifth. So stay tuned. Have a great conference, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.